Hi everyone, in this video, I would like to share with you the pros and cons of living in Halifax. I have been living in Halifax for more than 3 years now after moving from Ontario in 2020. Halifax is a great place to live and call it your new home if you are planning to migrate to Canada. The city holds an abundance of natural beauty combined with the vibrant city experience. Also, if you are a student, there are a lot of good colleges and universities in Nova Scotia offering high quality education. However, like any place in the world, Halifax also has some downsides to consider such as high taxes, limited job opportunities, poor healthcare and lower minimum wages. You can evaluate all the pros and cons and see which outweighs and make a decision based on your personal circumstances. Let's get started. Let's see the pros of living in Halifax. Number one, welcoming city. The first good thing you will notice as soon as you arrive in Halifax is how friendly the people are. With the changing social conditions in major cities like Toronto and Vancouver, Halifax is still warm and welcoming. Life in Halifax is very slow and people take time to interact with strangers and newcomers and will offer a sense of inclusion. Local residents are often willing to help visitors and new immigrants in all parts of the city. Halifax hosts a lot of events and cultural activities throughout the year. The city is well diverse and you will be able to find people from different cultural backgrounds. Halifax also provides a lot of settlement services for new immigrants to help them start their new life in the city. Also, you will be able to find your community group who can also help with your settlement and provide support. In my personal opinion, though Halifax is a capital city and the biggest city in Nova Scotia, you will get the vibe of a small town due to its welcoming nature. Number 2 low cost of housing and rentals whether you want to rent a house or an apartment or you're looking to buy a new home the cost in halifax is low although there is an increase in housing costs throughout canada halifax is still in the lower range compared to the other major cities as per the national rental report published by rentals.ca the average rent for a one bedroom apartment is $1,855 as of June 2023, whereas it is $2,500 in Toronto and $2,800 in Vancouver. This is a huge difference as Halifax is the largest city in Nova Scotia and the largest municipality in Atlantic Canada and its population was around 480,000 as of 2022. Number 3. Beautiful Natural Surrounding Halifax has a lot of parks, trails and forests in and around the city. The best part is you can access some of these places using the Halifax Transit as these are inside the city. You will instantly feel like you are in a different world within the city as you wouldn't hear any of the city noises and enjoy the tranquility. Halifax also has a lot of beaches, falls and rivers. I personally love the Crystal Crescent Beach. Rainbow Haven Beach and McCormack's Beach. There are a lot of trails within the city limits where fishing is a very common recreation. The parks and trails are well maintained and you can find chairs along the trail to sit and rest if needed. Number 4. Low Crime Rate Halifax consistently ranks as one of the safest cities in Canada. It has a low crime rate compared to the other major cities. The low crime rate can be credited to the good policing policies faster response to emergencies, and so on. You can also find signs and boards such as criminal watch neighborhood signs to keep the residents alert and aware of their neighborhood. The low crime rate and overall safety contributes to a high quality of life for residents. The city's well-maintained infrastructure and efficient emergency response systems enhance the overall sense of security and well-being. Now let's look at the cons of life in Halifax. Number 1. Poor Healthcare The one major and the most pressing issue in Halifax is its poor healthcare system. One of the most important contributors to Halifax's poor healthcare system is the insufficient funding. This resulted in a very minimal investments on the equipment, skilled doctors and medical staff. 
As a result, the system becomes overburdened, leading to long waiting times for appointments, delayed surgeries, and compromised quality of care. During the pandemic, all walk-in clinics have started to book appointments to visit the doctor. Earlier, if you had an illness, you could walk into one of these clinics and see the doctor the same day after waiting for a while. But today, you have to go to the emergency room if it is a serious illness or wait for an appointment for a walk-in clinic. The other major problem is finding a family doctor. After living here for over three years now, I couldn't find a family physician for my family yet. Recently, the province has launched an online consultation platform to solve this issue where people can consult a doctor online while waiting for a family doctor. All I can say is good luck finding a spot there. Number 2. High Taxes Nova Scotia is a province with the highest tax rate in Canada. Although taxes required to improve the basic infrastructure, essential services and better quality of life for the residents, the problem is there is an imbalance between government funding and a better opportunity for small businesses, private organizations and individuals. According to the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, Nova Scotia consistently ranks among the provinces with highest tax rates in Canada. In 2021, Nova Scotia had the highest combined federal provincial income tax rate for the highest income bracket, which is 29% federal plus 21% provincial. Number 3. Limited Job Opportunities Nova Scotia has the lowest job opportunities compared to the other Canadian provinces. According to the Halifax Partnerships 2021 Halifax Index, the city experienced a decline in employment from 2019 to 2020 with a 1.7% decrease in the number of employed individuals. Also based on the same report, Halifax had a higher unemployment rate compared to the national average with 8.5% in 2020. Despite being a great place for college and university education and having great universities like St. Mary's, Dalhousie and so on, the lack of job opportunities is forcing graduates to move to another province for better career prospects. Number 4. Lower Minimum Wage As of 2023, the minimum wage in Nova Scotia stands at $14.5 per hour which remains lower than the minimum wage in provinces like Alberta and British Columbia. Also, according to the most recent data from Statistics Canada's Labour Force Survey, Nova Scotia had the highest proportion of employees earning minimum wage in 2022, with approximately 11.2% of workers falling into this category. The lower minimum wage is determined based on the cost of living. Since the cost of living is low compared to other cities, the minimum wage is also low in comparison. However, the problem is that the wages don't align with the actual wage to be paid for the work. The same position or job will be paid more in other parts of Canada. On the other hand, small business owners are concerned about the high labor costs if the minimum wage is increased because the HST rate is taxed at 15% in Nova Scotia, which is the highest in entire Canada. In conclusion, as I mentioned already, Halifax has both advantages and disadvantages like any city on earth. Halifax offers great education, public safety, stunning landscapes and low rentals and house prices. On the downside, the cost of goods and services and taxes are high and the minimum wage and employment opportunities are low. If you are into a quiet and slow-paced life and drawn to the stunning natural wonders and beautiful ocean like me, then Halifax has much to offer. That's all for this video and thank you so much for watching.